Hey guys, welcome back to Fully Alive, and this is another episode of Living with Albinism, and I'm just going to talk today about um, just an experience that I had. Um, I think I'm entitling this uh, the weirdest question someone's ever asked me, and this was, it was a very weird question. It was a very awkward moment, actually. It was only a few years ago, but honestly, me and Brittany were talking about this. She's actually sitting right here, but um, we were talking about this, and we're like, is this the weirdest question? I've gotten asked a lot of weird questions or a lot of weird comments, but um, this was definitely one of, if not the, the weirdest, um, or the most awkward situation, probably. Um, so I'm just going to share it with you guys, and just, uh, like I said, this series is about, you know, letting you guys in on my journey what this has looked like for me and even as I'm continuing to heal from everything and become fully alive in every area including this um, and just kind of letting you guys in on some of that um, and I hope like with every other video that we do no matter if it's we're talking about this or anything that, that we do on this channel that um, it just brings you forward and um, encourages you and inspires you but also that, that you continue on your journey of becoming fully alive in every area, that you pursue the dreams that are on your heart and, um, and that you are rooted and grounded in who you are and that every you know, past issue, every place of pain or trauma, that, that, that you continue on that journey of getting healed from that. Um, so I'm just gonna start with just this story. Um, and it's something that um, like all these videos on this, especially on this series are really vulnerable. Um, but it was a very difficult moment for me and it's still something that I'm processing through. Um, and, but it, it taught me a lot. So I'll just kind of get into what happened. So, um, I was actually on like a mission trip. It was kind of like a mass, like evangelism thing where people from all over the country had come to this one city and we were, you know, doing like this like mass, like door to door evangelism and, and we were holding these large services and all this type of stuff. And so, and we were like promoting those and just praying for people on the street. It was a really, really good time. Actually, that week was my birthday. And so I was, you know, so excited to be, you know, with a bunch of friends. Like I was with my church family, the church that I was at the time and um, and just my really, really close friends and my family came to and, you know, we were just going to, you know, be together and just pursue the Lord together and, you know, uh, pray for people. That's like one of our favorite things to do is just to see the Lord, like transform people's lives. Um, and so um, I was really, really excited and um, it was great. Like we would have worship services in the morning and we would have like lunch and we'd go out and pray for people and we'd come back have dinner and then we'd like do it all again the next day and um i think this was like day like four or five we were there for like seven days i think it was like 10 i don't know it was like a, at least a week but anyways it was like day four or five that we were there and i was sitting at a table with some friends Brittany was at a different table um these were actually friends i knew from church and like we were i one of my really good friends was at the table everyone else that was at the table were people that like I knew but I wasn't like really really close with at the time and um but I of course I loved them like you know they were my church family and they're amazing but we just they weren't we weren't as close so um you know and a lot of the people that I went on this trip with besides Brittany hadn't really been around um besides Brittany and my family hadn't really been around when someone like said something to me or whatever interrupted something that we were doing together and said something or asked a question they never really been around for any of that so um you know being it there for, for them it was yeah it was new for them like being there when this situation happened so basically what happened was um this guy that i didn't really know he was just a, he had just come for the evangelism thing that we were doing he came up to our table we were like eating lunch he came up to our table and like stood right next to me and he said um so like are you mixed and i said no actually i have albinism and i explained you know what albinism is it's genetic disorder you know i don't have pigment or you know all that type of stuff i was telling him all that you know my parents are black i am black i just you know have a genetic disorder that 
um, decreases the melanin in my skin and everything. And so I was telling him that, and um, he was like, oh, so do you need healing? And that was the first time anyone had ever asked me something like that before. Like I said, I've been asked a lot of weird questions and had a lot of like awkward conversations or comments and all that type of stuff. But that was the first time I'd ever been asked that. So basically he was asking me like, do you need me to pray for you that God would like take this away or that God would make you look black or whatever? And um, I said, no, um, I, I don't, I don't need that. I'm fine. And I, I mean, like immediately as he said that I started to feel like this, like, you know, that, that anger that was rising up inside of me, but that need, like, I felt so vulnerable at the time because it was happening in front of a table full of people that had never even been around for any of this type of stuff before. It was like 10 people probably at this table, maybe maybe six, but anyways, yeah, about six. Um, that had never really been around for any of this. I hadn't even had any personal conversations with them about my journey or anything like that. And, um, and then, you know, one of, one of my really close friends was at the table, but she still hadn't been around for anything like this. And so it was happening in front of all of these people. And it was something that I'd never been asked before. Um, and I didn't really know how to respond. Um, I felt very vulnerable. I, part of me, like on the inside, kind of wanted to cry in that moment but the outside I wanted to be that like strong person that's like protecting myself and like defending myself and I wanted to put on that front so that he would honestly so that I could just get him to go away like I just wanted to answer his question and get him to leave and so I just said no I'm fine and I kind of had this like attitude and then he kept asking me some other things saying some of the comments and I was really short with him and wasn't even looking at him, kind of, kind of like looking to the side and looking at him a little bit and then like looking back down. And, and then so eventually he left. Um, and so it was so awkward, like sitting there at that table with everyone because no one knows what to do. And they're all looking at me and they're like, we don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. You know, it's so awkward when that stuff happens, uh, especially with people that had never experienced that before with me. And so I'm like literally staring at my plate of salad <laughs> and I'm just like eating like, you know, like, well, that just happened. <laughs> um, and so my friend who was at the table, she was like, um, let's go. And so we got up and walked out of the room. And like, as we're walking out of the room, she like says, she like puts her arm around me. She says, I love you so much. And then after, as soon as she said that, I just started crying. Like, I just broke down and started crying. And then, like, I we found a stairwell. And I just sat down. She sat down there with me. And I just cried. And then Brittany and uh, my friend Alyssa and some, a bunch of other people, so a couple of the girls that were at the table, they all walked out and, like, were, we were all, like, sitting on the stairs <laughs> as I was just crying. And people are walking by, like there's stuff going on and, you know, I'm just sitting there crying. And, um, and I was like, this was, I was just saying like, this was so vulnerable. Like, um, and, um, Brittany didn't really know like what exactly had happened at the time. Did you, you didn't know, you just no. knew something went down. Yeah. Yeah. And so she didn't know exactly what was said or what happened at the time. And I knew it had to do with albinism. Yeah. 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 And, um, and I didn't really get. You know, I didn't really say anything in that moment, but... Because you were too busy crying. Yeah, I was too busy crying. Um, but, um, and there were, it was just, yeah, it was really, that moment was really hard. Um, and so everyone was just kind of staring, you know, sitting there, like, just kind of trying to comfort me. And people were, like, filing in and out and, like, leaving the area that we were at. And, and so I remember we left and we went to um, watch this worship set. And as we were in that room, I was still, Brittany was sitting next to me, like kind of holding my hand and I was like crying off and on like the whole time. And, um, and then, um, I think it was like, so that, so then that day it, it got better towards the end, you know, all the people that were there were just kind of intentionally kind of being there for me, not really addressing. We didn't really talk about what had happened. Um, but just, just loving on me. And so, um, a couple of days after that, though, I was 
getting prayer. Um, and actually, Brittany was in the room, and then my cousin was also in the room with me. Um, and um, one of the, the ladies that was praying for me, she said, um, God made you in a unique way, and he likes what he made. And, um, and so, you know, it was just, it was just the Lord, um, you know, her hearing that from him, but also just like the intentionality, like he knew what had happened. He knew what I was asked. He knew, you know, what, what had just transpired and how that had affected me. Um, but like, and he showed up in that moment to remind me that like, you know, he loves me for who I am. He made me this way. And there isn't anything wrong with it. And I don't need to change. And so, um, so yeah. And even, but even in that moment of like crying in front of everyone, it was, uh, um, you know, at the moment, at the moment, like at that time, it felt so vulnerable and it was, but it really was like a moment of breakthrough for me because, um, you know, up until that point, I had always felt like I needed to be strong or like. I need to put on like a front and like, you know, just take care of the situation and then like, you know, make everyone feel comfortable, like just be strong in myself and get this person to go away and then just go back to normal life. And in that moment, I really couldn't like, it just was overwhelming. And so, um, and so like in that, even just in the seasons that came after that, even now, like as I'm processing things, um, you know, it was that moment that made me realize that, like, I don't really have to be strong in myself and actually, you know, allow myself to process through this, whether that means, you know, one moment I'm fine, the next day something happens and I'm crying on the stairwell. <laughs> you know, all of those parts of the journey are really, really important and they're all valued. And, you know, we... Um, it's a part of our healing process and we rob ourselves of those of that opportunity to really heal and to really um, be vulnerable and confront those things and allow our heart to heal when we feel the need to be strong every time so I sometimes I don't know like you know what my reaction will be all the time sometimes I'm totally fine you know other times it may be a little bit more difficult sometimes I'm crying sometimes I'm not but giving myself the permission to be like Whatever this looks like, I'm proud of myself in every aspect of this journey. I'm proud of myself, you know, when, um, when you know, I am seemingly strong or have something to say or respond or whatever. And I'm proud of myself when I have nothing to say and I'm just a mess in front of everyone because it's a part of this. Um, so, yeah, I just encourage you guys, even as you're you know, processing through things that you're going through that uh, just with, the, you know, my story of the Lord's faithfulness in all of it and him, the intentionality of his love, that he is so good that he wants to make his himself known um, in every situation, even the ones that are the, the most difficult. Um, he wants to redeem everyone, every single one of them. Um but also that, you know, you're free to respond however you need to in that moment. And it's not a shameful thing to, you know, be overwhelmed with emotion or not be able to, you know, look good or be able to control yourself or be able to fight for yourself. But actually when those defenses come down, when your need to defend yourself starts to come down, that's when we really can invite the Lord in and he can really um, heal that place. And like I said, like, you know, it was that process of that person saying that to me. And then it literally tore down all of my defenses in that moment because I couldn't, I wasn't prepared for any of that. And then the Lord showed up and he responded to that place in my heart that was still hurting. But it's after that some of those walls come down and you actually are in that place where you can let him really come in close. Um, so I just wanted to share that one story with you guys. There are plenty of other stories, <laughs> plenty of other stories to share and um, things to, to talk about when it comes to all of this. But um, I just pray that that encouraged you guys. And, you know, comment down below any, you know, anything that you're struggling with 
anything that you want prayer for, anything that you're processing through, um, you know, anything. You know, we're we're becoming fully alive together, and, you know, we want to build that community. Um, so we love you guys, and we'll continue on this journey together. So like, comment, subscribe. We're becoming fully alive. Love you guys.